Okay, so I'm going to refer to this fish as the poor man's giant garami. This is a now tilapia. This is the same type of fish sold for human consumption. A lot of people eat this fish. Um, I actually buy this fish from the supermarket and I feed it to my predatorial fish in the basement. Uh, this is um, raw fish. Female jaguar. But I'm keeping this one as a pet and this fish is just amazing to me. I'm definitely surprised at the outcome of this guy as a pet. Definitely a great pet and I'm trying to figure out why not about a lot of people actually keep this fish as pets. Why is it that this fish isn't referred to as a pet? This is an awesome fish and I think a lot of people overlook it. So today I want to give a little bit of a spotlight on this fish. First off, look at this. Look at those colors. Maybe I'm the only one that's seeing this, but do you see the blues, the gold, the reds? I paid one dollar for this fish. This fish was sold at a fish farm and he was sold for aquaponics, so they sell them extremely cheap. So I bought, bought this fish for one dollar. He grew extremely fast. In one year he grew to 14 inches. Look at that. And it's just amazing. And I'm shocked that not a lot of people actually consider keeping these fish as pets. So this guy is in my 210 and he's living with some Mabuna. And right away you know that um, he's not a predator because he's living in this aquarium with fish that could obviously fit in his mouth and he doesn't bother them, which is a great thing. Um, the large fish, small fish is an awesome combo. And whenever there's a fish able to live with small fish without um, eating them, you definitely have a very awesome fish. So really quickly, the reason why he's front and center is because he wants some food. So I'm going to toss something in here for them. And I'll toss some pellets over there. And look at that. Just a, uh, the scene itself, the one big fish with all the small colorful fish, definitely very stunning. So we have this big guy. And just watching him eat is pretty amazing because he's all slow and graceful, if you will. Look at that. One dollar for this fish. So yeah, he's in there, he's eating. I have some Omobuna, so yellow labs, female Kenya right there. We have Masobo Thiep right there, the yellow one. Um, albino red top zebra, pearl zebra back there, a male ACI, just a mix of Mabona, but the one that catches everyone's attention is this guy. Now, my main motivation for buying this fish was simply the price. He was so cheap and that's the main reason why I bought him. I know that all cichlids have this hidden potential and he being one dollar, I definitely was willing to figure out what his hidden potential was and there's a lot of things working for him. So like I said, he has the awesome color. Um, this fish is very entertaining. He's always swimming around. He's never like just sitting there. Sometimes with my Central and South American cichlids downstairs, um, they have these moments when they just sit still for hours. Look at this guy. This is what he does the majority of his day. Look for food. Right now he's grazing on algae. Um, later on he'll be sifting through the substrate, which is beneficial for the tank. And I guess his greed makes this guy extremely active and that results in just a very entertaining fish. On top of that, this guy also has some pretty cool personality. Um, he follows me back and forth. He's kind of like Adonimus with that responsiveness to my hand, only without the aggression. Adonimus chases my finger trying to kill me. He chases my finger just asking for food. And this is one of those fish that will let you pet him. Um, he reminds me somewhat of a koi, but yeah, definitely um, a very cool fish. To top it all off, these fish are super hardy and very easy to take care of. Sadly, that's probably the reason why um, they are abused a lot of times in aquaponics. Um, in aquaponics, people would take like 10 fish that size and put them in a small 55 gallon tank for life. So yeah, these fish um, end up getting some very terrible lives because they are so um, easy to take care of. However, if you get one, a few tips. First of all, these fish are monster fish and they grow fast. So you definitely want a big tank. A 180, I'd say is minimum. Um, these guys can be aggressive towards their own kind. I had this guy and three females and you see he's the only one left. He killed two of the females and the other one I had to take out. And that's like with most African cichlids, the males are extremely aggressive towards females trying to force them to breed. So you probably have to have either a huge tank, like my 350 downstairs, or just have multiple females, like five or six, or do what I'm doing and just keep one. Now they can be aggressive towards other tank other tank mates that are not 
the same species. Sometimes this guy does participate in a hierarchy, which means he does try to fight these guys, these little Mabona. But of course, there's nothing serious, just a little chase here and there. And I imagine with that behavior, he would try to challenge other cichlids just because that's their nature to find some spot in a hierarchy. You're going to get that with any and every cichlid. Overall, when you compare the Central and South American cichlids, like I said, he is not as aggressive as them, especially considering his size. This guy could grow to 24 inches, and yet he is not as aggressive as a Dovi, not as aggressive as a Jaguar. He's probably about the same amount as a Peacock Bass when it comes to aggression, which really, I'd say, is semi-aggressive. When it comes to feeding these fish, that's even easier because these guys eat anything. Um, they're omnivorous, but I find that this guy especially loves his greens. He showed it because he's constantly pulling down all the pothos that I, I have up here. He actually pulls the leaves down because he's so big and eats them. That's why he reminds me of like a hippo with these African cichlids. So yeah, they love their greens. You saw him greasing on the algae. So if you give him a lot of greens, he'll definitely appreciate it. But every now and then I give him a, a little bit of a carnivore diet. And um, like I said, not a picky eating fish, but loves to eat. So just make sure you feed him often and he'll definitely be happy. But yeah, everyone, just wanted to shine some light on this fish. If you wanted a monster fish, um, a little bit different from what you see everybody else keeping, this is definitely a fish to pay attention to. If you wanted the monster fish that was affordable, this is definitely a good option. If you wanted the monster fish that's not too aggressive, like I said, this is a great option for you. Um, yeah, just wanted to give you guys a look at this fish that so often is overlooked. Um, as for the future of this tank, Eventually these Mabona will be going downstairs into a 125 just so that I could get more full Mabona activity. Mabona are a little bit um, refrained from their natural behavior of aggression because of this guy, which may be a good thing. Because of his presence, I find that they're not as aggressive. They do breed and everything, but males fighting males, why would I want that, right? But I think that that's the full meaning, not the full meaning, but that's the full nature of Mabona. And I think if I could get that full aggression, I'll get more color and more of that natural behavior from them. So I'm going to be taking those downstairs to the 125. Um, he's probably going to be going into the 880 gallon aquarium. And then up here, either my Jaguar pair or Adonimus. I'm not sure yet, but eventually in the months to come, that will occur in this aquarium. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this now tilapia. Would you keep one if you had the tank space? Definitely um, a cool fish, and it's definitely a fish that you guys need to pay attention to. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.